This is the first exhibition held at my weekend gallery in Coburnie. The theme is Astronomy in Pictures and uses emblems of astronomical woodcuts and engravings, primarily from the 16th, 17th and 18th centuries, which I have coloured. The exhibition divides into a number of sections. Firstly, we look at the image of the astronomer in the emblematic tradition. Here we see an astronomer and a theologian discussing the stars, while Ptolemy and Albemassar try to measure the angles between the various heavenly bodies. Next, we look at the various instruments used by the early astronomers, various sighting rods and often elaborate devices for measuring angles. The astronomers were involved both in creating maps of the heavens as well as the earth, and thus contributed to the development of navigation during the 16th century age of discovery. Here we see the Italian explorer Amerigo Vespucci, who gave his name to the discovery of the New World of the Americas. He stands with his astrolabe, which has enabled him to navigate on his voyages. The southern cross of stars appears above him, as he is likely to be depicted here in South America. There were various ways that people of the 16th and 17th centuries framed their ideas about the heavens. The Christian philosopher depicted here bases his ideas firmly on the word of God, while the pagan philosophers see the heavens as a spiritual world. However, in the 1570s, the Danish astronomer Tycho Brahe constructed very accurate measuring devices and was able to create a series of tables of the movements of the stars and planets. This became the basis for the development of exact observational astronomy in the 17th century. The next section of our exhibition is on cosmogenesis or theories of how the world came into being. From earliest times, this intractable existential question led inevitably to the idea of a creator god who conjured up the world. In the early 17th century, this naive view was insufficient to many people. And we find Robert Flood, a hermetic philosopher, developing a picture of the emergence of the cosmos out of empty space through a gradual conversion of light into matter by a process of densification. From the medieval times up till the early 17th century, the established idea was that the Earth was at the centre of the cosmos and the planets and stars circled around the Earth on a series of heavenly spheres. Through Copernicus, Galileo, Kepler, amongst others, the modern picture of a sun-centred cosmos, around which the planets, including the Earth, circled in elliptical orbits, came into being. By the 1660s, even the Catholic Church had come to embrace this new picture. Artists of the 16th century often created woodcuts depicting classical mythological images of the seven planets. Here are three series of Virgil Solis, Georg Pence, and Hans Siebold Beham. Hans Siebold Beham 
created this series of woodcuts in 1539. His work was later copied by Virgil Solis. Here is another planetary series by Baham, printed sometime after his death. Around about 1530, this influential series appeared. It is now attributed to Georg Pence. It brought together the image of the planetary god traversing the heavens in a chariot, while on the earth below is depicted the influence this planet had on human beings. It came to be called the Children of the Planet series and became extensively copied and reworked over the next hundred and more years. Thus Venus, the goddess of love, presides over a garden of love, while Mercury influences the arts and skills of craftsmen. The yearly motion of the sun against the background of stars traces a band across the sky which is known as a zodiac. From the earliest times, the twelve constellations in this band were thought to influence the forces of the sun and planets, giving rise to astrology. The zodiac was also often shown on the armillary sphere, a model of the heavens often constructed in brass. These became increasingly complex as artists added other elements to them. This later image shows an eclipse of the sun being observed and recorded by Astronomia, one of the seven liberal arts, here shown as a woman assisted by cherubs. They use accurate sighting devices as well as a telescope to project the image of the solar eclipse onto a sheet of card. In early times, the appearance of a comet in the sky was a portent of doom, of approaching war and famine. This superstitious attitude to celestial events was gradually replaced by a more modern view. As early as 1552, Peter Appian made observations of comets and showed that they moved relative to the sun with their tails always pointed away. This observation ultimately led to the explanation that comets are merely small bodies orbiting the sun. In the closing section, we show three images of astronomers, a wood cut from the 16th, a copper plate engraving from a 17th century book by Robert Flood, and a stylized, rather romanticized image, steel plate engraving, from the 19th century. Copper plate engraving allowed artists to work in large format and thus could create increasingly complex images. This emblem from Robert Flood shows all the phenomena that take place in the heavens lightning, comets, hail, rainbows, meteors and so on. Our final image is an 18th century engraving which serves to sum up many of the elements we have presented in this exhibition. We see there the old earth-centered cosmos and the heliocentric view that replaced it, the ancient idea of the zodiac and our millary spheres. Saturn is shown with his rings and Jupiter with its bands indicating the progress of telescopes in the modern era. The engraver still feels it necessary to give God a mention, though he is rather marginalised at the top centre, 
being indicated by his Hebrew name. All these images, and a number not shown in the exhibition, are included in a large format, high quality picture book I published in 2011. It is readily available in hardback or paperback editions through Amazon.com and Blurb.com. The paintings are now available for sale. You can purchase them through my website page, alchemywebsite.com slash bookshop.